133-128. The Celtics take game one in overtime over the Pacers. It wasn't pretty. It had its moments. There were uh, end of quarter shots going in in every quarter tonight. The big one, though, Jalen Brown with seconds remaining after Rick Carlisle decided not to foul. And that's where I want to start tonight as we bring in Sarone Battle. Sarone, that's the number one takeaway. What <laughs> Rick Carlisle, who's been there before, right? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to – Joe Mazzula was awesome tonight, and we'll get to that in a minute. How does Carlisle not foul in that situation? And then what happened later in the game? It was Missoula that didn't allow a three-point shot. And in that situation, all they had to do was inbound the ball, right? They couldn't mm-hmm. even do that. So I don't know. Why don't you just foul? They did it. Brown gets the three, sends it into overtime. I thought that's where the whole game completely fell apart. Even That was a bad move, bad coaching. Everything went down in the end here, but let's celebrate a Celtics win. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a uh, real quick. What's going on, Joe? How you How doing, you doing bro? <laughs> that was wild yeah, tonight, man. It, was, it wild. was wild. And I think it turned with the pressure of Drew Holiday on Halliburton. They said enough with the switching, enough with the nonsense. You're paying Holiday a quarter billion dollars to be a defensive guard. And he started locking up Halliburton. Halliburton felt the pressure, started dribbling out of bounds when they had chances to kind of put the Celtics away. They go to inbound the ball because of the Celtics' ball pressure on that last play. They try and get it into Siakam. Jalen Brown makes a play looking like a, 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 a DB coming out of nowhere and forcing that turnover to get the ball back to even get the, the three-point attempt. So the Celtics' defense, to me, they turned it up on this team when they had to and made the plays. And it was their stars who did it. And but I think the defensive plays from Jalen Brown, the steal off Siakam, the the the, the play would cause Siakam to deflect it out of bounds, and then of course Jalen Brown hitting that shot. And it, listen, Siakam still fouled him. I don't care what anyone says. That was a foul in today's NBA. His Jalen Brown's elbow was in his face, and he hit Jalen Brown's legs. It was a foul. That should have been an and one on a three point attempt. But I understand the ref staying out of that. But, yeah, once he caught it and pump fake, Siakam said he just wrapped him up and held him. Just grabbed him and just held him. Maybe he didn't want to follow him taking a three-point attempt, but sometimes you got to play the numbers. Jalen Brown shooting 60% in the playoffs from the free throw line. He was three for six at the time at that point, I believe. So what you foul Jalen Brown shooting the three? He ain't going to make all three of those, but they, 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 they blew it all the way around. But I think more than Carlisle, I think Siakam was the one who – completely became Toronto Raptors Siakam down a, down a stretch of this game. Wow. Uh, a lot of takeaways tonight. Um, I, I'd like to keep it positive as they stole one. And when it came into overtime, Jason Tatum scored 11 of the 16 points, hit some big shots, got to the, got to the rim. Um, he was, it wasn't pretty tonight. He had his turnovers. They, they, if you go back early in the game, they took him out early. Um, mm-hmm. Usually he plays the whole first quarter. So his night was interesting, and if you look at his statistics, it was great. He had an awesome night. He always does this to the Pacers, by the way. He averages 33 points a game against them. I think people are going to be critical of the end of the game, him taking the final shot. That's what we would have been talking about if the Pacers didn't blow it. So I don't want that to get lost tonight. Mm-hmm. But when, when it mattered in the clutch situation, it was Jason Tatum. And how many times, Serona, have you and I sat here and said, and I, I, I'm emphatic, I, I mean, I'm really, like, on to this thing. These guys can't do it alone. Like, right. Tatum and Brown helped each other tonight. And in overtime, on exactly, yeah. on both ends, they got a great game. But Drew Holiday, like you mentioned early on, but, like, they are going to have to win as a team. People are going to be critical again of J- of Jason Tatum late in the game taking the shots, but it was Jalen Brown who hit the big shot and it elevated them to a win in overtime. But I thought clutch moments, if you're going to get on Tatum, give him his props for coming through in overtime and putting this thing away. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have high turnovers when you play 40-plus minutes. It is what it is. Look at Halliburton. Look at the Pacers. Look at all the good players that played tonight. They all, they all had their moments. Guys get tired, guys get winded, whatever. But 
Jason Tatum, they they put a stat up early. He had missed his first free throw, and he had made what twenty eight in a row in the playoffs. I'm like, well, I didn't even realize that. You know, he missed a free throw since the the early stages of the first round. But I thought Tatum, Tatum had stretches this game. He, I think he was a plus twenty tonight. Every time they pushed the lead to double digits, he would come out for a second. And every single time he came out of the game, the lead would shrink. And I'm sitting there, and I had tweeted out earlier, people crit- question the importance of Jason Tatum and his impact, but every time he steps off the court, the Celtics just collapse. Didn't matter if it was the, the Pacers bench was on the court. They collapsed. They got bad shot attempts. They weren't going to the basket. They wouldn't get free throws. And stretches where he wasn't touching the ball, they struggled to score. They collapsed. They, they missed 33 pointers tonight. But he was the only one that said, let's just get layups. Let's get layups all night. We can go to the layup. We can get layups and free throws against this team all night. And nobody was really doing that with him. Brown had his stretches of doing that. But they started settling a lot. But I thought Tatum, if they found a way to hold on to those leads when he came out of the game or was sitting for a few minutes, they would have blown this team up. But every, if you notice, he said they had a double-digit lead in every quarter of the game. Because every time Tatum would come in, they push it to 9 10. He sit down, they get it, they cut the three. Tatum come in, they push it back double digits in the second quarter. It, 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 this, this fluctuated the whole game. They get to overtime. Tatum takes over, says, you know what? Screw it. Let's go get some layups and get to the foul line and put this team away. And he did what he's supposed to do. And locally, nationally, if you're going to give other guys around the league credit for winning close games when they only have 16 points and go five for 25, you got to give Tatum his credit for giving 36 in a, in a, in a playoff, uh, a conference final, and double digits in overtime alone. So I, he was the hero for the game. Not the hero. Brown was the hero. Tatum did his job and closed him out in overtime. They got to do it together, and they need help. It's. You know, people want these guys to take over and be the number one guy. And I don't know how many post games we have to do here to to tell people that the game has changed, right? How many 30-point, 12-rebound games we got to do for Tatum before people say he's a good playoff performer? And you know what? Again, <laughs> if if people – you know, people are going to bring up him late in the game with his shots. Well, um, of course. I think I think it's valid. Um, <laughs> it's funny because Skaz and I are sitting here and – uh you know, I'm I'm already getting. Hey, Joe, do you still want Tatum taking the shot? Hey, Joe, do you still want Tatum taking the shot? I do. Um, but tonight, uh, if you watch that out of bounds play, by the way, did you see the pass by Drew Holiday to find um, Brown in the corner? Normally, that's a bounce pass. He yeah, I kinda, hadn't even noticed that. He almost kind of <laughs> spun it to him so he could catch the ball to actually get the shot off. Uh, if you if you get a chance to check that out again, but. Yeah, they needed everybody tonight, and the benches were different. Um, Indiana really turned over the game after a 12 nothing lead. Their bench took over. They dominated there. Um, the Celtics definitely dominated on the free throws tonight. They got to hit them, though, um, and they did mm-hmm. down the stretch. So there's a lot of things to clean up here, and the Celtics said all those things after the game tonight. I just yeah. wanted to bring up the fact that the two-star players who face – a ton of adversity did that tonight, and they responded after that adversity. Tatum in particular, right, had a bad turnover, got the and one, and then a sidestep three. Maybe that's the jumping point for him. He's been doing it all playoffs, but maybe that's just the catapult for him the rest of the way here. Yeah, I mean, and one thing people have to realize, if if this is your first time watching the Pacers, this is what they do. This is the highest scoring team in NBA since the 83 Nuggets who was who put 184 points up without shooting a three. This is the highest scoring team you've seen in this league in 40 years. They score the basketball. They run. Their point guard gets a ton of dimes. As a team, they move the ball. This is what they do. On the flip side, they are one of the worst defenses in the NBA. So they're going to score 120 points, and you're going to be around the same one you're in and probably outscore them. The free throw, the, um, the free throw difference. Everybody's been jumping on that. You see a lot of stuff on Twitter, locally and nationally. Oh, they getting, they getting, they getting robbed at the foul line. The Indiana Pacers led the league in fouls. They fouled more than anybody else. They fouled more than anybody else in the playoffs so far. They've allowed the most free throws in the playoffs. They've allowed the most free throws throughout the whole season. The Celtics, on the flip side, 
fouled the fewest in half all season. They've allowed one of the fewest free throw attempts all season. This is who they are. After 90 games, you are who you are. The Pacers foul that way because they are a terrible defensive team. They have no choice but to grab, pull, hold, do whatever. Neesmith just flying around, just throwing himself into the crowd. This is what they do. It's up to you to attack them and get get to the line and go to the basket. When you settle for threes, you bail them out. Halliburton, as good as he is, he doesn't defend. McConnell does not defend. You know, uh, the, none of their guards were did anything defensively. You see, you saw what Holiday did against those guys. You could post them up at will. The Celtics got in trouble when they started settling for threes. They missed 33 pointers tonight and still scored 133 points. Imagine if they hit their threes. It's a, they already put 150 on this team early in the season. They're capable of doing that if they just made their shots tonight. Shots didn't fall, and they still scored 133 points. Oh, uh, listen, all the things that everyone says about the Celtics happened tonight. Put them in a close game. Who will take the shot late in the game? Any close game, they'll choke. Like, all those things somewhat mm-hmm. happened tonight. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say that that didn't happen, but... They just won the game. Yeah, they so, stole it. That's what you do. Good teams, they stole it, Joe. They stole their opportunity. So and then once, go, go. I'm sorry. No, I'm just gonna say, like, it's, it's. We can be critical, but they, are, they are. Like after the game, they celebrated, but they knew they, they were bad. Like they yeah, knew they, they stole one. They knew they got lucky. They knew the Pacers brought their A game. My, just my, my whole point is, is that. Like, we should celebrate the fact that they faced adversity, hit shots when it happened, and they won the game. And just one other thing on this. The non-Jason Tatum minutes tonight, when he wasn't on the floor, they got destroyed. They were an awful basketball team, which is, again, something they struggled with at some point during the season this year. So that's something to keep an eye on. But for the people who do want to discredit Tatum, when he was off the floor, they were awful. Right, he missed the big shots late. Sure, you can get on him for that, but when it mattered in an overtime game to close it out, eleven to sixteen, and and one, a sidestep three, boom! Like he faced the adversity, he got the help from Brown, and they're up one nothing in the series. That's it. That's all that matters is you find a way to win games. We gave all the Celtics great teams credit for finding a way to steal games at the end. We never you we, Bird stealing the ball. You notice we never show the first 47 minutes of that game. All we see is Bird making a steal, get DJ getting a layup and we celebrate it. We never talk about how they were down the game was basically over until they stole a play. But they had their moment. When they made the play defensive, they made the plays defensively first to get the ball back to get opportunities to even tie it. They did it on both ends. And then once they got the steal, Brown hits the key shot. One of your stars made the big shot, and they went to him, drew it up. He made the shot as they designed it. Then once they tied it up and went to overtime, they all looked at each other and said, yo, let's turn it up on these dudes. And they did. Joe, they took it to another level in overtime that Indiana could not match. And they turned it up on them dudes, and Tatum alone was just too much for them to handle. And the better team prevailed in the end. This is how you win championships in this league or in any sport. You have to win the ugly games. You have to win it when you don't have it. You have to win it when it's tight. All, like you said, all those things happened to them tonight, and they found a way to steal a win away. Now Indiana has to go back and say, yo, we wasted a Miles turn a 20-point half. We wasted Obi Toppin's best half offensively. We wasted TJ McConnell hitting everything. They wasted all those opportunities And now they got to go in the next game. And so, yo, what if we're off? What if Indiana doesn't shoot 50-plus percent from the floor? Now they're in real trouble. So the pressure is on Indiana because they know they can't go down 0-2 against this team. And I think the whole battle-tested thing, the Celtics now know what they're bringing in. They they threw their best punch at the Celtics, and I think they'll be ready for them in the next game. But, But you have to give them credit for finding a way to steal this game.